on to Straight Talk with yes. Katie and Lindsay. Happy Wednesday. My name is Katie Hutchinson, and I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist, and I'm also a certified mediator. Hey, everybody. I'm Lindsay Kearns. I'm the mama behind MalibuMamaLoves.com, and I'm also a certified conscious trauma-informed life coach. Today, mm-hmm. we're going to be talking about something that affects about 1% of the population, Mm-hmm. And that's because it's so underreported and so hard to identify. Yeah. And that's Munchausen by proxy. Um, it's a form of mental illness mm-hmm. and it's a definite form of child abuse. Yeah. So, so what this, well, let me just say, it's much more than 1%. It's just that it's not identified. It's right. Yeah. Um, what this means is that the caretaker of the child, usually the mother, but it could be the father. I don't want to be sexist. Either make, generally, though, this is something generally, that affects women. Yeah, generally, it's the mother. Usually makes up symptoms that their child has or makes their child ill in order to receive attention from like hospital staff, yeah. friends, family, etc. That's what Munchausen by proxy really is about, seeking attention for the caretaker. And it's scary because these parents will um, be constantly doctor shopping and Mm-hmm. talking to, you know, doing these medical procedures on these kids when there's really nothing wrong with them. Right. And right. there's no way to prevent it. Well, we need to be watching and learning. That's true, yeah. right? So Munch- Munchausen by proxy has been renamed factitious disorder imposed on another in the DSM. Now, most people don't know what this is. So we're going to go by Munchausen by proxy today, okay? Yeah, Just for the purposes heard of, of the show. I've heard of Munchausen before. I haven't heard We're of factitious. factitious. So, so we're going to go to by MBP, we'll which stands for <laughs> Munchausen by proxy, MBP. Yeah, it is. it is. It's just a very scary um, thing that these people go through. Mm-hmm. So how can we tell if a caretaker is experiencing this? Okay, so number one, the mother usually is going to make frequent trips to multiple pediatricians, multiple hospitals, like Lindsay said, doctor shopping. They're looking for that right empathetic doctor that is going to listen and listen and listen. And I think it's really important to say that these people are hurting inside Mm -hmm. and they don't feel needed or wanted in this life. So they create a situation with their child where they are needed, where they're the center Even of attention. Even if it's fake. Yep. They create this situation where they're needed. It is fake. The mother says the, chi- the child has symptoms that don't match the test results. And in fact, even sometimes they'll mess, well, a lot of times if they can, with the test results, like urinalysis, yeah. I guess they would do their own. I don't know what they would do. I'm not really sure. I'm not a doctor. They will claim that they've been out of the country or that the medical records have been destroyed. So in the movie Gypsy, which is a great depiction of Munchausen by proxy, it's a true story about a mother who claims that her child has leukemia, et cetera. We'll get into that a little bit um, more. But when she's asked about the medical records, she says that all their medical records were lost in um, Hurricane Katrina. And so that's what the doctors believe. But then Lindsay told me something. Hurricane Katrina actually happened while we were digital. We all medical records were already digital by the time. Exactly. So you can't really. No. And so, and this is a (laughs) true story. It is a true story. And everybody just believed her. So, but that's the thing. A lot of these women look like Barbie. Right. Or, um, you know, something the loving well, and Barbie comes in all colors and shapes and sizes That's now. True. So, but my point is Barbie is the perfect woman of whatever mm-hmm. race you are. Mm-hmm. So all these people look like Barbies and these perfect women and they play that concerned role so well. Right. People don't even want to back check it. They're like, oh, this, this mother. No. She, how could you, you know, she something could never. like that? I would say the person looks more like the 50s homemaker. Is what it is. They're yeah, always there absolutely. baking and cooking and, you know, being the best parent that they can. I'm sorry that I just developed yeah. an accent. Okay. So they claim to have a history of serious medical conditions with no evidence to back up these claims. Just like in Gypsy. Mom yeah. said she was diabetic. She was had leukemia. She was paralyzed. We'll talk about it. They don't ever want to leave the child's side because they don't want the child to accidentally spill the beans 
to the hospital staff, nurses, yes. pediatricians, et cetera. So they will stay glued to that child. And they also want that attention. Yes. And being by the child's side is where it's going to happen. Yeah. And it just in like that movie, Gypsy. I mean, yeah. Did and where you can see we, it? Yeah. But where can we watch that? I think on Hulu. I think it's on Hulu. It's either Hulu or Netflix. It's so good. Okay. Like, Well, I just thought that that was such a great depiction mm-hmm. of Munchausen, how it can happen and mm-hmm. the after effects. Oh, it's, it's just, it's. This is what it is. It's a true story about a mother that claims that her daughter has cancer, is diabetic or allergic to sugar, is paralyzed, etc. She shaves her daughter's hair every like, I don't even know, three to six months. It's horrible. She tells her daughter that she's like 12 years old and the daughter's like 20 or something. She has her on all kinds of medications, all of these downers. So like when child protective, not child protective social services, social workers, when they visit, she'll give her morphine or downer. So the daughter's just hunched over in the wheelchair when the daughter Mm -hmm. can actually walk. She lies to the daughter, just like I said, and just tells her all kinds of things like you're allergic to sugar, you're diabetic, you'll die if you eat sugar, you'll die if you start to walk, even though she realizes that she can walk later on. Yeah. All receive, all while receiving tons and tons of money from fundraisers and from the state. She even had a house that was built for her and it was purple, <laughs> purple and pink, I think. <laughs> with a lot of baby dolls it's crazy and then the daughter finally realized what was happening to her mm-hmm. right yep. and got online and did all this research and realized she wasn't sick and her mother was a fraud then she met a boyfriend mm-hmm. and the two of them conspired and killed her mm-hmm. killed the mother and now what's even sadder to me more sad is the fact that this daughter is in jail yeah. for god knows how long for when she abused. has been abused from day one horribly abused well and i think that's part of the problem with our court system Mm -hmm. is that we don't really recognize abuse yet Mm -hmm. they don't in cases not really yep i mean they'll still punish you i know and they're not realizing like chemically what's going on in this person's brain Mm -hmm. when they've been affected and they're reacting in this way they're not Mm -hmm. in control of themselves well of course not and they don't know anything this i mean she was she was treated like she was seven years old when she was like 21, 22 yeah, years old. Yeah, it's scary. So how do we tell? What are some, some... Well, okay, so that's a good question. Experts aren't really sure. Research, researchers are seeing past unhealed trauma. Mm-hmm. Big surprise! Yeah. We say that in yeah. almost every episode. Yep. A history of physical, emotional, and sexual abuse. Yeah. A lot of neglect. Possible death of a parent early in life, which screws you mm-hmm. up developmentally. We can go into that in another show. Some some of these caretakers grew up in families in which being sick got them the much needed nurture and care that they didn't get if they weren't mm-hmm. sick. So then they would pretend to be sick all the time. And they learn that habit and then mm-hmm. transfer that onto their to child. their child. Exactly. Stress can play a big role in the development of Munchausen by proxy, like a divorce a serious illness, finances. Um, But I see, I see it multi-generationally a lot, just like you said. So something will happen to them and then they carry it on to their child. And it just, it goes so under the radar because they're so good at pretending Mm -hmm. and creating these situations. Mm -hmm. Now their main role, Mm -hmm. right, is to keep that child sick so they can feel that need Mm-hmm. and wanted mm-hmm. and then they get all the attention of wow what a great person you are and people How are going to go take care this? of them they're going to take care of their child but they're also going to take care of them and they're going to get all this attention yeah so the caretaker usually appears to be just terribly distressed and worried about their child distraught over the child's illnesses and they seem to just they'll do anything to take care of this child they just yeah. seem like the best parent in the entire world um, I, I do feel like a great line of defense for this mm-hmm. is community. Mm-hmm. As parents, as mothers, this has happened to me before mm-hmm. I was a life coach, actually. This was, you know, I've got three different friends that um, I identified as having Munchausen. And let me just sure, explain a little bit. Mm-hmm. As a mom, as a lay person, when you're talking to your other mom friends mm-hmm. and you have that one mom friend that is constantly talking about doctors and allergically talking about what's ailing their child and new treatments and what they have to go and do. Mm -hmm. That's a major red flag. Mm -hmm. That was for me. Mm -hmm. I had a friend that 
put her child through some very serious surgery that hadn't been done since 1898. She went to six different doctors before she found somebody that would perform this. this. What was the surgery? I, it's too much. Can't say. Okay, never mind. Didn't ask the question. It was really awful. Yeah. So, but my point to you is when you're like out talking to these people, if you identify that, it is our responsibility, even if you don't have a license in anything, no. to protect that child. So call Child so Protective speak up. Services. Call you can child anonymously call services. Child Protective Services. You can. you can call a therapist, talk to a different friend mm -hmm. that knows this person and say, hey, I'm kind of getting these vibes. Mm -hmm. What are you thinking? Do you think we should kind of investigate a little bit and help this child out? Yeah. Because it happens. And a lot of times these people are nurses. Mm -hmm. I knew somebody that was going through nursing school and she had very young children at the time. And yep. for the course of nursing school, those kids had literally every ailment. Yep. To the point where we were like, what is going on Well, here? and they have all the access to all the drugs, et cetera. Yeah. They'll give them insulin. And, and they have the knowledge. They, they know that's what I'm do. saying. They have the access and the knowledge. Yeah. So you want to look for like the stay-at-home parent mm -hmm. or the, you know, somebody in the medical field. Mm -hmm. Nine times out of ten, those are the people that are, are offending and doing this. Oh, yeah. Yeah, or the ones that have been abused. So they will tell the child to act ill. A lot yeah. of times they give them meds, like I said before, morphine, and they'll get just by doctor shopping, they'll get a plethora of medications. And sometimes even in the hospitals, they'll do things to make their child even more sick. Like if they've been given a breathing tube, they'll pull the tube out for like a minute or two. This has been caught on tape before. Yeah. I find that uh, they're almost like pathological liars. Do you uh -huh. find that? Because For sure. they're creating these situations. They're lying about these symptoms to mm -hmm. such an extreme level. But I do believe they've convinced themselves somewhere in their brain, like this is happening. Yeah. And they need, my baby needs me to do this. And I'm being a responsible parent mm -hmm. by doing this. Mm -hmm. Right? Yep. They ruin test results, contaminating things. Mm -hmm. They may induce symptoms through means as poisoning, suffocating, which is scary, starving, causing infections. It's just disgusting. It's such a serious, so serious scary. disorder. And doctors and nurses and parents and community, we need to become aware of this phenomenon and Absolutely. try to get the child by himself or herself and ask a ton of questions. And to get that parent peeled away from their child, if it's a hard. parent or caretaker, yeah. is so hard. But you've got to do it. Well, and if you're a parent mm -hmm. in this situation that your child is friends with that child, start having play dates. That's get that right. Kid over to your house under the guise of, we're going to be playing. This is, you know, the they usually time. won't let them. I know, but you know, as I'm just yeah. suggesting it's a like, good that's idea. A way to try. It's a great idea. They usually won't let them, or if they do, mom is right there next to the two children. Yeah. But you can run a line of defense with that too, because I've had that situation where mm. you have a multiple play date. Oh, yeah. Right? That's and so good. you have one parent like totally away monopolizing the, other the one and getting her to talk about all the medical stuff. So she's not even paying attention yeah. to what's going out while the other parent can go talk to the kid. I love it. I think that's a great idea. Yeah. So what kind of personality traits are we looking for, Katie? Okay, so these people usually need a lot of attention. Desperate for attention. Attention hogs. Exactly. Call them, right? Histrionics. They try to appear devoted and altruistic, this perfect mama bear. Uh, they become overly involved with doctors and medical staff, like weirdly involved. Do you know what I mean? Like once they find this empathetic doctor or nurse, just asking them so many questions and becoming so familiar with them, uh, asking about their family and bringing them cookies and et cetera, et cetera. They, Nine times out of 10, they actually have actively working with like four or five doctors. Mm -hmm. And you well, know. until usually they find that one that they can convince to do these crazy surgeries and stuff. Um, they refuse to leave the child's set aside, as we've said before. They exaggerate the child's symptoms or simply make them up. And they seem to appear to enjoy being at the hospital and receiving this attention from the hospital staff. Mm -hmm. They seem to love it. Yeah. How do we diagnose it? Well, that's a hard one because the person with Munchausen by proxy must admit to the abuse and submit to psychiatric treatment. However, people with MVP are usually dishonest. I think they're dishonest and liars, but I also believe that they don't even know what they're doing. I agree. I agree. I think that they either are liars or they're unaware. And so diagnosing this condition is so hard. In addition, doctors and nurses are usually so focused on the sick child that the caretaker gets overlooked. And that's yeah. one of the biggest problems. And the doctors are repeatedly trying to diagnose the child when the symptoms don't up, add up after time. 
they might start to look at the parent or caregiver, but it takes a, a long, long time. time. And that's our hope is that finally they'll see, wait, if this person is saying that the child has leukemia, but we're doing blood tests and all the blood cell counts are correct. I'm not sure if yeah. it's the white or the yeah. red blood cells. We need to educate doctors, nurses, community, parents, schools. friends, schools, we everybody. We have a kid that's getting called out sick and coming in constantly mm -hmm. with new injuries mm -hmm. and new specs for how they can be in the classroom. Right. That's a red flag. That's very Something true. Is going on. That's very true because it's such a horrific disorder. Yeah. It's very dangerous too because you know if the caretaker makes the wrong mistake, oh we well, could they lose could the kill child. them, and then they get a lot even more attention. Yeah. Now I've heard lots of times that the um, symptoms and illnesses will stop once mm -hmm. the child has been removed from the caretaker, and this is when it can be diagnosed. Yeah. Uh, this is when doctors and nurses, etc., hopefully start to watch the caretaker for possible Munchausen by proxy. Yeah. A doctor's first job and a therapist's first job is to protect the child first and foremost. That is their number one priority. Us as a community, it should be as well. Uh, it should absolutely. And so they need to call Child Protective Services within 24 hours if they suspect Munchausen by proxy. Can you do that anonymously? Yes, okay. you can do that anonymously. Go find anonymously. a payphone if you're too scared or, you know, stop into like, I don't know, an office you just or something call. and just... Yeah, call and say, so hey, this is the address of the person. This is what's going on. Yeah. I'm scared. And it sounds like treating it is almost a moot point because there's just so much damage in there. It's challenging to say the least. Yeah. Treating this disease must involve treating both the caretaker and the child and the whole family and basically the whole community that's around them. Well, and probably a lot from the caretaker's history. Mm -hmm. There's gonna be a lot of healing because at the end of the day, this is about what's going on inside of them. Exactly. So first, what needs to happen is Child Protective Services needs to be alerted. Be alerted, thank you. The child then will probably be removed if Child Protective Services is doing what they should be doing. The child will be removed and all children within the household will be removed from this caretaker and hopefully they will never go back. And I want to pause you. I just had a yeah. thought real quick. I do want to say one thing. Mm -hmm. We're not talking about the kid that constantly has a cold or an ear infection. No. Right? Because that can that, happen. Yeah. We're talking about the extreme. Mm -hmm. Like, all of a sudden, oh, my child has cancer. Or, oh, well, there's a bone problem and we need mm -hmm. to cut the bone. Let's just chop that. off that or, leg. You know, some random, like, oh, there's something wrong with their eyes. They're going to lose eyesight mm -hmm. soon. Mm -hmm. Or they bladder. Can't. A lot of times yep. I, had, I knew somebody that had bladder issues tried to say their their child had bladder issues and they were giving her shots mm -hmm. in oh yep um but there was nothing wrong with the child well that's also a sign of regression when a child is being abused lots of times they'll start to um yeah. wet their pants and stuff yeah. when they're like 10 yeah. years old so first child protective services needs to be alerted then the children need to be removed then any existing illness needs to be addressed, right? Because this parent has been, or parent or caretaker, has been actively making their child sick. Yeah. Lastly, the child will need continued therapy. And I'm forever. I'm talking forever, for the rest yeah. of their life. Um, to be honest, we all do. Exactly. <laughs> so there's no shame in that. No. <laughs> the caretaker will likely face criminal charges and lose their child or children. Please, yeah. please. Counseling will be recommended, but only if the Munchausen by proxy caretaker admits to their disease, of which they very rarely do, do, because as we said, they're either not aware and or they're habitual liars. Have you ever worked with anyone who has admitted to it? I have not. Yeah. I absolutely have not. I never have mm -hmm. seen somebody actually admit to it. No. I've seen it and said, like, this is what's mm -hmm. going on, but mm -hmm. never any diagnosis yeah. or anything. Yeah, I have seen friends that with kids that constantly are just constantly sick and they're allergic to everything. They can't do this and they can't do that, that kind of stuff. But another thing that's really important is family therapy for the whole extended yeah. family of, wow, this is going on. Is this a multi-generational situation? Let's look at this. Well, the thing is these children who are abused by these caretakers um, often develop multiple injuries and illnesses as a result of this abuse. Mm -hmm. Some that can be really life-threatening, as I said before, a mm -hmm. simple little, like, you know, a lay person trying to do this to their child might not know this little shot they're going to give them that they think will just induce a little, like, nausea or exhaustion mm -hmm. could hit that kid wrong and 
they're like gone. an insulin shot. They're it's, gone. It's barbaric. It's so barbaric. It's really a scary thing. And they usually are sub subjected to a lot of painful and really frightening medical procedures. Mm -hmm. Like spinal taps, etc. Yeah. These children will develop anxiety and depression and PTSD and all kinds of things over their life. And they're at a really high risk for repeating this abuse with their children. Yeah. That's the part that's so scary. Yeah. So, so true and so very sad. The worst part of this whole situation is that the child will then develop, not for sure, will most likely develop MVP as they do get older. And like I said, yeah. it's multi-generational. And then the next batch of children will be abused and it goes on and on yeah. and on. And the reason we're talking about this today, you guys, is because I do believe in my heart, eight times out of 10, I'll say, I'm willing to say that mm -hmm. these these people, these parents, they think they're helping. They don't know what they're doing. So we need to talk about this. We need to educate it. We need to not be embarrassed when we notice one of our friends or even an acquaintance or a friend of our child mm -hmm. having an issue. We need to speak up and be comfortable about that and help these people and reassure them, hey, there's better ways to get attention, mm -hmm. right? We can reframe this. We got to work on this. But first, as with anything, as with anything that you want to heal, you first need to identify it. Mm -hmm. You need to be open about it and you need to accept mm -hmm. that this is what's been happening to you and what you've been doing. Mm -hmm. And you have nothing to be ashamed of yep. because we all have our bags. We all have our things that we do mess up. Mm -hmm. And that's why we want to talk about mental health all the time with you guys so that you can feel more comfortable. You can see we're we just need two to so erase the stigma for yeah. goodness sake. We're just two Southern California moms jumping on here, trying to share information with you guys. Take these conversations and have them with your friends. Talk about it. Mm -hmm. Knowledge is power. And it's the only way we're going to be able to help mm -hmm. and, and help these kids. And you might be wrong, but it doesn't matter. Still go to Child Protective Services it. and report it. Report it, report it, report it. And talk to the person about it. Say, hey, you know, I've noticed you've, you've had a lot of medical procedures, you know, is that, can we talk about it a little bit? What's, mm -hmm. what's prompting all of these things? Yeah. And like you were saying, you know, definitely do everything and anything you can to get that child apart and talk to them in a calm manner mm -hmm. where you just ask a few questions and open the conversation and allow them to mm -hmm. flow because nine times out of 10 kids will when they feel safe. Mm -hmm. And if they're with another parent of one of their close friends, they're going to feel safe with you. Right. Whereas usually the Munchausen by proxy person is going to, if you do ask them questions, et cetera, they're usually just going to cut you off. But I'm not saying it's not. But the child trying. will the child. really know how to do that. Right. Right. And just like in the movie Gypsy, she's in a wheelchair. Mom says she can't walk. And then one day she decides to get up out of the wheelchair and she can walk. So it's... Yeah. <laughs> That would be pretty easy to diagnose. So go watch that movie. It's so good. I can't yeah. even tell you. We'll look it up. All right, you guys, we're going to leave you there today. We ran a little bit long today, but we had so much fun talking to you. Yes. There's so much always to talk about. So Happy share your comments. Wednesday. If you have any tips on Munchausen, if you have any concerns, let us Stories. know. We'll call CPS. Yeah. We'll do it for you. Mm -hmm. Just let us know mm -hmm. um, what is going on and how we can help. We exactly. need to keep this conversation going, you guys. Have a great hump day. We'll see yeah. you on Friday. Okay. Thank you.